to uh, record. Great, so I'll start. My name is Rima. I am the founder and CEO of RD Marketing. Uh, we have been doing this uh, as RD Marketing since like 2018, but I'm a marketer and I have over 20 something years of experience. I hope it doesn't show. <laughs> uh, but yes, we've been, so Eunice and I have been doing this for a very long time. Um, and, you know, specifically the webinars, it's been great to actually have all of you come for this. We love to impart um, knowledge, we love to impart information, and we love to also serve you as well. So we're here to serve you as uh, your marketing partner. So whenever you'd like us to actually help you plug in terms of strategy, in terms of marketing, in terms of where you need to be, where do you need to get to your, your target audience? If you don't understand who your target audience is, for example, if you don't know how to get to them, do you know what you want to get to the next level, for example? So all of that stuff, we are your marketing partner as RD Marketing. So yeah, we'd just like to welcome all of you. Eunice? Yes, thank you, Rima. Yes, this is my uh, co-host, sidekick, uh, business partner. Thank you so much. Everybody, welcome to Content Strategy. My name is Eunice Mandat. I am the founder of My Biz Marketer, a marketing agency for startups, also the founder of NBM Africa, an incubator accelerator for um, African founders around the world. Um, we are excited about this topic. As I began to say that I, this, this topic works for anybody whether you're doing this for revenue, whether you're doing this uh, as a hobby, this will help you achieve the goals you uh, achieve the goals that you like want to achieve in regards to content that you're putting out on the web. So let's take it away. Welcome everybody. Great stuff. Right. So here we go. So of course, content strategy is kind of at the heart of marketing because marketing is all about connecting with your target audience, connecting with your target, bringing that traffic to yourself, bringing that traffic to yourself being in your website also. And you really want to like, you know, um, bring that uh, business towards you as well, right? So content strategy is a very important part of any aspect of marketing. As you can see over here, 93% of online experiences start with a search engine. Think about it. Whenever you're thinking of anything at all, right? Even whether you're doing a search for a hotel at Champagne Ridge or a place to live, um, you know, wherever you want to go, um, Karen, or you're looking for a particular kind of dress, or you're looking for a phone, anything you do, you go onto Google searches, for example, here in Kenya or Africa, a lot of people go into Google searches, and that's what you do, you search for something. So the content then that comes up, whether it's on your website, whether it's on the blog, whether it's a published article and so on, or a social media page, that's the content that we're looking at. And that's what we want to look at today. Right, Janice? Yes, right. So what is in your toolbox for this content creation uh, and what you do have so to be successful at this? If you, you select a CMS. And for the most part, the CMS system, which is a content management system, uh, the most prevalent one is WordPress. It's the easiest one. Um, back in the day, there was a uh, blog post, uh, there, was, uh, there, was, uh, I think there were very many actually, I, I, I could list a bunch of them, we'll give you a list of those later. Uh, you, you created an account, wrote what you wanted to write, put an image, and you put it out there and hope somebody comes and views it, reads it. Uh, but today, we have to be strategic in how we do things. You, you don't want to put all that effort into your content and it gets nowhere. So you need these tools, right? So you need the CMS system, you need analytics, you need that editorial calendar, uh, or social media management tool, SEO tools, and the project management tools. And this will depend on how big of a team you have. If you're an influencer, it's just you. You don't need a, you probably don't need a project management, management tool, but it could be helpful to just get you a roadmap uh, to understand where you're going and what you need to do in the next three months, six months, nine months. But these tools will help you to stay focused, keep, keep consistent, 
and it, it keep out, take, putting out content that actually connects with your customers. Absolutely. And so, of course, you want to start with what is your mission, right? Even when you're doing the content out there, you want to talk about the mission of your company. You know, what is it all about? What do you want to say? But also a mission for your, stent, for your, for your content itself that is going to the potential clients. And we're all going to take you through that, of course, right now. Okay. So the first aspect of it is your goals. We have to set objectives. Without setting objectives, it's like you're going blindly into it, right? I mean, we can. We can say, okay, oh, this looks nice. Let's put it out there. Oh, this looks nice. Yeah. Let's put it out there. But then there is a certain way that if you create a goal or an objective, you're then able to measure around it as well, right? That did that goal of yours, your objective, for example, was your overall objective initially was brand awareness, for example. So your entire content is creating awareness in terms of your brand of your business or your brand objective could, or your business objective um, could be around generating leads or generating mm -hmm. revenue. And so of course your business objective is aligned to your content objective. So whatever you're creating is very much aligned to what your business is all about. And so, it's an important start point to make sure that you create that objective and create that goal so that therefore you may be able to uh, measure um, towards it as well, if you will, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we have to start with the audience. Who are you creating this content for, right? Um, really think about it. Um, if I am a plus size uh, woman and I want to sh help my customers uh, or my followers understand uh, how to dress a plus size woman, then I'll be talking about where to find clothes, what clothes I like, what materials suit best, who are the best brands to, um, that make good products for that plus size woman. My goal is to educate plus size women, right? So think about your audience. If it's a brand, then you're thinking about what your brand is trying to achieve. What's our goal if it's, it's in sales and our customer base is uh, IT folks? We are then talking to the IT folks. We've understood what space in IT they're in, um, what budget they're usually working with, uh, what locations, are they local, are they international? So you harness the, the persona of the person you're going to target with that content. Right. Next slide, Prima. Yeah, actually, I'm um, just to add to that. It's very, mm -hmm. very important. If you do not know who your target audience is, please yep. spend um, some time doing this. You know, and there's several tools around it as well. And I think in one of our blogs on our website, website, we may have actually put it, uh, put a link, and we can probably do it here. But look for, yep. like, for example, HubSpot. They have a really nice, uh, nifty tool around understanding a uh, target audience and creating that personas around it as well. So your demographics, Absolutely. psychographics, interests, and so on are very important. Yeah. Right. And then so, of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, so in your audiences, you're breaking down the audience into two. There's the primary audience and there's a secondary audience. Rima, you want to go into that? No. And of course, it's important for us to understand who's our primary audience, right? And um, case in point here is like uh, the example that Eunice gave, which is a plus size model, a plus size person, right? So I would like to purchase something. So of course, you would want to understand who I am, what do I like, what are my challenges, what are my pain points, uh, mm -hmm. what kind of preferences do I have, how can I be helped, what are the what are the channels that can you can help me out with as well. However, maybe my husband would also really like to purchase something for me. And so my mm -hmm. husband would become your secondary audience, right? So you need to understand him as well. So what are his likes? What are his dislikes? What are his challenges? What are his pain points? What are some of the interests that he has and so on? And so that's why you see that the, the entire list of what we have on primary audience is there on the secondary audience. Because when you're doing campaigns, you can sometimes run a campaign directly for your primary audience. And then you also have one specifically for your secondary audience as well, right? 
So yeah. I thought it was really important for you to understand that sometimes the content is not specifically or directly for your primary audience. There. Very true. And, and in addition to that is that the, the customer may be not the consumer. That's what Rima is trying to say. That I, I'm a mom, I'm buying clothes for my kids. The, I'm the customer, my kids are the consumers. So but you're, you're targeting me as the primary audience because I'm the one who's going to purchase. But when you develop the product, you understand and, 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 and acknowledge that the consumer is that child. And so what do they, what would they like to wear? What do they find exciting? So you're tailoring the product development and the, and the visuals too, because the child may say, mommy, I want that, right? So you've captured them and they then got connected to the person who would make the purchase to make the purchase, right? So they are driving the purchase uh, decision. Yeah, absolutely. Great. So the second part, of course, is the content strategy, the kind of the meat of what we're here for today, right? So, yep. but this yes. is all yes. part of the process. Remember, it's not yep. just something yep. that you just want to say, wake up and just do it. And you can do it and you can still grow big and great. But if there's some direction to it, uh, we find that our marketing campaigns work much better. Um, so that there is certain thing, there's a niche in there, there is an understanding in there, there's an objective in there, and there is some work that's actually been put into it, right? So yeah. that's really, really important. So let's start with some kind of content types, right? Um, here are some types of content. So you've got, of course, the one that everybody knows, social media, you've got blogs, people read blogs um, or write blogs. Um, content, which is like blogs, which is like your video uh, blogging, you've got podcasts, events like these are also part of your content types. Maybe in the chat, you can write um, what other content types that you can think about. Yes. What do you think we've missed out? There's so many different types. That's the reasons why we said EDC, but there's so, so many different kinds of types of content that you can oh music <laughs> yes music yeah. absolutely yep. yeah yeah music uh -huh. anybody Just else letters. email newsletters yes yep mm -hmm. absolutely drama okay think also like ebooks and you know white papers for example those are case also studies content. Yeah, case studies, you know, yeah. interesting. Your press releases, you know, yeah. that's also content that you create. Memes, yeah. <laughs> Don't we love our <laughs> yes. memes that just come this quick, right? Something yes. happens and the next minute you already have a meme that's out there already. So that's great, yeah. Thanks, guys. Keep them coming. But that's basically what we're trying to say. There's so many different content types that are out there that you can think about to create and create an impact around as well, right? Yeah. Well, with the content, then you you have the message that goes into the content. So, guys, you when you're going into a blog post, you probably have picked up a topic, and you're going to write about it. Remember, go back to your objectives and say, what is my objective? What am I trying to achieve? Am I trying to achieve sales? Am I trying to achieve engagement? Am I trying to achieve, what am I trying to achieve? So that that aligns with the blog post that you write or the vlog that you do or the meme that you create. They has to, it has to reach to an outcome so that you want, that you can say, well, we put up a, a, a blog and we were talking about getting dressed, uh, um, I'll give the example, like a study of the plus size woman. Um, I'm going to an event and I need to pick out a dress for that I need to go to this event with, right? I invite you all to a, a Facebook Live and say, hey, help me pick out my, the dress that I should wear to this event. Now, that help is a video that will create engagement. Folks will come and in, 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 interact with me and say, hey, we like dress number one or two or three. And, with that, I select a dress. Meanwhile, the other later content, later content I have to create is giving you uh, the customers that attended my blog the link to 
the link to the products that I had chosen. So you know where to buy them and the brands that I'm representing. That would be my secondary message. My third message would be maybe I'm now I'm off to the event. Here's what I look like with the final look, makeup done, shoes and bags. And, and then you want to know the whole look, where do I get it? That's another secondary message. So they all drives up to what my, as an influencer, or a plus size influencer I'm trying to do is push products for people to buy, elevate the brands that are sponsoring me, and then also grow my following as a, a plus size influencer. So I've achieved my primary goal of, of, of gaining followers in the, as, a, of, in, as an influencer. But then I've also achieved my brands that, that have hired me to promote their products and then also push the product so that when you buy, click to buy, I get a commission from it. So that's how it works. So when you think about your, your products, your services, or whatever you do, think about the primary goal, which primary message that has to align with the objectives and then your secondary. And don't leave them out. And there could be several secondary messages. Just I, I break it down so you know each and one where that goes to and how it feeds right back to the, uh, the, the campaign and ultimately the uh, business objectives. And it can, I mean, I'm just going to stress on this one as well, because like your primary message is literally make it simple, make it clean, make a very, very simple objective that you yes. probably have that you want the audience to know. Um, you want the audience to know that, um, you know, like every Tuesday, it's going to be a gloomy day. That's your main objective. Then your secondary objectives could be things that you can support to, to say that that is what it's going to be. So it could be testimonials, yeah. it could be um uh what you call this like uh, data around it you know so some data around it and so on so those other bits are your secondary message to your primary message um on the weather on a tuesday sorry what day is it thursday sorry weather on a thursday <laughs> <laughs> weather on a thursday so yeah so thanks uh core structure of content let's get into um thinking about that for a little bit. So let's start with content creation process, right? When you're thinking of creating some content, let's think about, first of all, what is your intent, right? So we've, thinked about, we've thought about goals, we've thought about who's your buyer persona and so on, but what is your intent? What are you intending to connect with somebody? What's, what is your, probably a call to action, right? Um, what is your intent of how you're going to connect with this person as well, right? So that intention, so to say, is a very important part of when you're creating your content. So I know it's like we're not getting into oh how you act, but this is this is it. If you understand these parts, you'll be able to easily get into creating your own content with intention. There you go, <laughs> creating content with intention, right? Yeah. Second part is your quality. Um, quality is very important. And I'm talking about two aspects of quality. Quality is like, for example, your writing should not be shoddy, um, should not be ambiguous. It should be very clear. But also if you're creating like, for example, photographs or videos or vlogs or something like that, or like a podcast, then make sure that your uh, the audio or the visual quality is very high or good quality, right? So even if you create content with your phone, for example, you still have to make sure that, for example, the lighting is right, right? Um, you, I mean, I don't know whether this is happening on your side as well, but look at Eunice's video versus my video. Mine has some lighting coming from the back. There's something on my side is coming. So this is not good because it's distracting. Right, you're you're very very distracted with all of this. But however, when you see Eunice, her her background is nice. You know, you've got people coming in. I apologize for that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, not good quality. So I was just trying to explain to you what good not good quality is, bad quality is, right? So that's right. Really good timing with the person that just walked in. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely brilliant. So that's yeah. what that is. Then we've got unique. 
one thing you need to figure out, of course, is do not plagiarize, right? Um, your yes, bottom line yes. is even if you are um, creating content that is similar to somebody else's, but do not say it word to word. Rephrase yeah. it in whichever way you'd like it to, yes. but you know, yes. using the same words and stuff will really get into problems because yeah. Google is constantly sending out like the bots around. And if you get in, if you're found out, pretty much you're blacklisted as well, right? So you don't want to yeah. have that. But also make it unique, like think about unique ideas, you know, unique content mm -hmm. that people have never talked about. Um, and it could be, you know, something that is related to your community, for example, as well. So it doesn't necessarily have to be, um, like I said, we have the primary and secondary market. We've got the community at large that we're also yeah. serving as well. So think about those kinds of unique um, content that you want to create um, for for your um, for your marketing, pretty much, right? And the key cornerstones too to content is those keywords. Um, you're using the keywords that target your audience. That's the primary and secondary audience. Um, so keep researching and find which words work for your audience that are least competitive and use those and become the preferred. Uh, we've said in the in the in the search engine world, the leader on that keyword. Um, this takes work and it it takes time. It, it's not something you're going to do today and forget about it. You have to keep doing it, evolving it, developing those keywords. That goes to all your social medias as well. So when you create an Instagram post, you're selecting hashtags that then help your audience find you. So if I add hashtag plus size woman Nairobi, then somebody is who's plus size and in Nairobi that finds me and if i say plus size woman and african then that's an african looking for plus size model or plus size woman they are able to find me so really be thinking and take time to think about those keywords that are going to directly connect to your audience uh, and and then that the search engines are able to send the traffic that's relevant to you to you um that this would be play into your SEO, but th this is why we say content is important for SEO and SEO will need those keywords, All right? Absolutely. And uh, one of the things that we want to also highlight is um, something called clickbait. You probably have heard about that, which means that maybe it's a trending topic or so on, right? So you want to put that hashtag into your content, but then it's not relevant to your content please don't put it again, you can be blacklisted. So don't do clickbaits, don't do things that, you know, like, oh, attract somebody, but then it's not anything to do with your content in there. Yep. Um, it does confuse people and it has a negative effect um, with yes. your organization, with your brand, um, with your product and with your services. Yeah. So yeah, not a good idea to jump on a trending topic or a trending keyword, um, which is not gonna, it's not relevant to you at all. Yes, if it doesn't align, don't do it. Uh, if I'm plus size model and something political is happening, I should not jump on that trending topic. No. All right. Okay. Right. So then so, we've got we've got the calendar, so, and of course, um, okay, yes. Yeah. So there's a couple of things in the calendar that we can talk about. Um, this is now a content calendar that you create for yourself, right? Yeah, Again, yeah, having yeah. a content calendar helps you. Remember, we've got the objective first. We've understood our target audience. Then now the next part is we've understood like the bits and pieces. We're intentional, want to be unique. We've put the titles and so on. We know what kind of information we want to put onto it. And then, of course, when you're working on putting it out there. So it could be, for example, um, the blog. So you want to do a blog per month. So your publication date, you want to put it on, for example, um, the first week, the first Thursday of the week, you know, so you do a bit of research around it and say, okay, fine, this is where I'd like to put it out. So then on the calendar, you put your publishing date, you put the article title. So what is that related title that you'd like to put onto it? Then, of course, you've got the content pillars. We've got a little bit more about content pillars um, that we're going to talk about, but it's kind of um, your objective. 
um, like for example, if your objective is about engagement, then you know that's what you want to put into it. That this is what I want as an outcome of yeah. um, your your content. Then what kind of format do you want to put into it, right? So like remember we mentioned, is it a video? Is it a, a an image? Is it blog? And so on, right? What kind of content do you want to put out? Yeah. And then of course the distribution channels. Again, go back to understanding your target audience and where your target audience is going to be, your distribution channel will be linked to that. So for example, if you're doing a lot of B2B and I've got a couple of clients who are really wanting to connect with your B2B uh, audiences, your LinkedIn is a great channel to do that, right? So there's a lot of different places, ways we can actually put that content out there so that it can connect with your, what are the challenges and pain points of your target audience? Yes. And so the channel I'm selecting on this is like, for example, LinkedIn. Or if I'm doing like right now, one of the trending things is reels on Instagram or um, you know TikTok videos. They see again, TikTok has a specific kind of, um, target audience. So think about that. Where is your target audience going to be? And then put that um, content in that particular space. So your calendar now will show um, as such. So um, yeah, here's a, here's a sample of the content calendar that we have. And I'm going to jump back into the pillars that you know, Eunice is going to take you through. But you can see over here, um, you have like the days of the of the of the week. Um, which week we're at, what kind of content, where do you want to put it, and so on. And, you know, this kind of helps out in terms, of, you can even put it not just uh, um, the date, but also time. Because sometimes okay. you find that, for example, you get much more engagement at a certain time of the day. And again, it's yeah. not a one size fits all. You need to think about um, what when is your audience the best or the likely to be um, on social yeah. media at a particular time, right? Um, like um, some businesses will be on of like, for example, um, a business daily online at a particular time of the day. And mostly it's like early in the morning, they want to flip through it. And nowadays it's all yep. online. So then you yep. want to make sure that that particular content that you're looking at, even if it's ads, because even that is something that you want to put out there, but then that's what you're targeting, right? Yeah. Yes. So... So the content pillars um, guide you into the types of content you're going to create. So promotional content, it's pretty much that. It's a, a promotion of whatever you're trying to promote. Um, and you, in the components of it, a promotion would probably be a call to action, um, a, a good visual image, a video, whatever visuals you would like to put in to, to capture the, that audience to grab their attention so that then they can click onto your call to action and they're off to make that purchase. And the, ob the objective here was to get them to buy, but you were using the promotional pillar. Now the educational pillar is that you're educating your customer. The plus size influencer I am, I want to educate my customers on how to dress well, or where to buy good plus size clothes. So I'm educating. But with that respect, I'm also entertaining, right? So whatever I do in the educating part, it would be boring if I didn't do anything entertaining and engaging. The folks will not come back. They will not find value. There's nothing pulling them back. So I might put a bit of entertainment in, in, my, in my content so that I can drive engagement. Um, quizzes and, and games and, con and uh, contests help also bring that community back into transacting with you, engaging with you, and learning from you. To choose these pillars, so you, you, may, you may want to do a couple of them on a, on a, on a content, uh, for example, a blog or a video, uh, and maybe just one. So it only, it, it, you, it's up to you to pick what works best for that target audience that you're targeting, right? When you have dry content, like I'm a, I'm a doctor and I'm trying to get people to come to my practice, there's nothing exciting about going to visit the doctor. So he may use educational and promotional pillars to, to connect, but he might want to try and throw something entertainment entertaining so that folks kind of get excited about coming to, to, to his blogs and blogs and blogs often. Uh, if, because if it's a dry cut and whatever, folks aren't going to come back. So choose your content pillars wisely. 
oh, and should I note with uh, our famous fees the engage, educate, entertain, excite, and yes, and, and empower. Use those as much as you can. And empowerment is an education. Excitement is an entertainment. You know, and you know, engaging you, and it brings in uh, and some entitlement. And then one content that would generate out of it is user generated content, which we we, we did list, but. Sorry, my video just cut off. Um, that video, sorry, sorry, got cut off there for a minute. Okay. That, I haven't even lost my, my train of thought. What was I saying? No, you're talking about like the engage, educate, entertain, excite, and empower, Ex and how that helps. <laughs> yes, somebody just tried to call me on the Zoom. Sorry, that distracted me completely. It's kind of our phones when we do this, right? So yes, so use those this ease to help bring some some um, what I'd call interest to your content, right? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. And we use those all the time. So even when we're actually helping time. clients and so on, we use yep. those five E's yep. all the time. You can note them down okay. somewhere as well. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay, so we've gone through the calendar already and then content promotion. Um, I think I already mentioned, for example, an ad that you put on a display, uh, for example, on Business Daily and so on. And there's several different yeah. websites that your clients would yeah. probably go to. And so yeah. with that, you'd be able to connect with them organically and connect with them mm -hmm. with paid ads, right? So there's yes. some paid content that's out there. And if you're talking about social media, you will find um, that there's only a small percentage of the people that follow you that actually your content gets onto their, um, on their, onto their feed. Okay. It's unfortunate, but that's how the social media um, channels actually make money. Right. So you yeah. need to actually boost it, even if it's to your own followers. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, someone uh, recently asked me that, hey, listen, you know, um, what if I just, you know, pay for some uh, people to follow me on my social media pages? And my answer to that was why? Because the question here is the people who are following you should give you a certain conversion. Right. And if you're not getting any sort of conversion means that your audience is the wrong audience. So your followers are just for the sake of sharing that number. It's not like that anymore. That's a metrics that we don't actually um, uh, measure anymore. Not the number of followers, but the people who are actually engaging with you, people who are converting, people who are um, inquiring with you and so on. So you'd rather I mean, organically growing is a very slow and painful process, guys, right? Yeah, I would always recommend is. work with Eunice, work with myself, work with anybody you feel is the right person who can do some good media buying and can connect with your target audience in the best way possible. For sure, um, your content needs to be promoted. People need to know about it so that you may be able to come, so that they may be able to inquire with you and then you can get that chance to convert them and then you have the ka right? So revenue, of course, is a very crucial part of it, right? And for that, uh, you know, if it's a business that is making money, that's what it is. If you're in an NGO, the kind of impact that you're making for people as well, that's important. Um, so that's really, again, I will go back to influencers. As an influencer, if you're an influencer, you want to have the right audience following you so that when you go to somebody and say, listen, this is the kind of audience you want, I have it, mm -hmm. right? I have it and this is the reasons why I have it because look at my statistics that I actually have to, 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 to prove mm -hmm. that as well, right? So yeah. even considering, um, you as an influencer make sure that the people who are following you again numbers don't mean anything unless they're actually helpful with conversions right yeah yep now, now your promotion guide and this is the the structure you use to uh, to 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 create that promotion content is of course back to objectives again we'll keep saying it and the target audience and ultimately that having those correct when you have the right, then you can put a, a, call, a call, to, uh, call to action, then you're going to the conversion you need. 
or and are seeking. So be use this to structure to when you're sitting down to create that promotion content, not just promotion content, any content, to think about the objective, to think about the target audience, then the call to action. Always have a call to action because that's the point. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the appropriate channel. So my audience, the the, uh, the plus size women, they're probably on Instagram, they're on Facebook, they're probably on TikTok. What's my call to action to them? My call to action to them is, hey, go over there and click on the the the, my, the, the, the stuff I'm promoting, the outfits I'm, I'm promoting, or follow me. And that is building my community so that when I present myself to a brand and say, I have the audience you want, I, ha I truly do have the audience that they want. And then I look at the metrics and look at the metrics to say, how often are they coming back? How, where are they following me from? Um, in, and then what are they liking and not liking? So I can tell a brand, hey, you know, you put something out, but that, that did not connect at all with the, with the audience. And it, the, that audience is your target market. So they'd say something about that product, right? So those metrics help brands to select somebody to work with as an influence. And now as for us brands, we, those are the metrics we care about. We put up a content, we're talking about a certain product and, and, or a service, but nobody's connecting with it. Either the message is wrong or the product is something about the product is wrong or the market's not right for it. So we have to examine those metrics to determine what's, what's wrong with it, all right? And that's why metrics are important. Next slide, Grima. Yep. And right into metrics, time. right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right into metrics, right into metrics. Right. And so all your key performance indicators, your metrics, and what kind of um, measures that you'd like to actually have is very, very important. So measuring your content, obviously, you know, so remember the objective again, go back to the first part that we were saying, set your objective, and then do the campaign, run the campaign. Yes. When you come yes. back, you can measure and see what worked, what didn't work. And something we really love to do as um, when we're running, especially ads or even content, even whether it's posting or blogs or so on, is checking what kind of engagement that we've gotten if we've done the same thing. So this called something called the A-B testing, right? So A-B testing also helps us create a lot of information that we can understand our audience better and better every single time. So it's something that you can probably do. I know Cindy's gonna ask, what is A-B testing? um a and b so literally doing two different things and it could be a very small little tweak um you know it could be the same image but the color or the title one item in it is actually changed it could be the image like for example on one it could be like a different kind of image or this one so on and so forth but it's one small little tweak that you've made and you see what is the difference that actually makes for the same kind of audience um yeah. when you're putting it out there right yeah. So the data points yeah. are very, very important and crucial to reaching yeah. your goal, because at the end of the day, you want to reach your goal, right? Um, okay, so when we're doing these metrics, we need to create a report around it as well. So whether it's a report for ourselves, if you're a solopreneur, or you're doing this for your business, you know, you you have accountability of stakeholders in your business, and you want to actually, you know, give them the give them that report. Mm -hmm. You need to figure out, first of all, what you're reporting on. So you can say you're reporting on, for example, your social media, your website. And on your website, you probably want something called Google Analytics at the, at the least, you know, Google Tag Manager. Um, those are some of the things that you need to then extract that information and then put it on a report. So on your report, you have your option one, two, and three, what you're actually showing to people. Um, then you have how frequently you'd like to have that report sending out. So is it you want a weekly one, you want a monthly one, and so on. We, with our clients, we do a monthly report um, that shows what's been happening for the entire month. And then, of course, what visuals you'd like on it as well. So, of course, this would be like I'd mentioned, if it is, um, see, you have a report that actually shows the data and information, but you need some screenshots to show the actual data directly from your Facebook backend, your Google, your website backend, and your Google Analytics backend, and so on. So once you show that, then you'll be able to see that graph 
um, that yeah. your stakeholders is, are very in, interested in because that is completely data driven information. Yes. Um, yes. Data driven um, decisions that they can actually make then, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Very simple, right? So we're in the creation process, yes, right? Process. Yes. 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 So this creation process, this is now, do, now not the content strategy creation process. This is the content itself. And so you have a, you've got the calendar, you've got the publishing schedule, uh, you've got an editorial process. Now, some people, uh, you know, some big companies would have an editorial process because they have white papers, case studies, blog, podcasts. It's, it's, it's a whole production. It's almost a media house, right? But at the influencer level, it's just me doing uh, press size uh, women stuff. I, I, I have this, but not at the scale, at the scale of a big business or, or an SME. So at my level, they have to think about how many times I'm posting a blog or a blog. So I'm not creating all the different types of contents. I've got specific types of content I've chosen, the, the TikToks, so that means social media, uh, a, a video blog that I go Facebook Live or Instagram Live. And so I create the calendar and on the schedule of which I want to do these things, right? And then publish them with the times I know my audience is likely to connect with them, right? So how often are you publishing the blog post? You choose, you choose, not somebody else. It depends on your business. How many times a week you want to do it, right? On the, on the videos, the same thing. What you want not to do is not is to do one this month, and the next time you do one is six months later. Your audience has already left, right? So be focused, be consistent, do this, uh, and you will see you reap the benefits. The ROI will be there, and then your campaigns. Then, when you're promoting them, say with paid uh, content, you're picking the ones that do the best to promote that to drive further engagement and and conversion. So be, be selective. You don't promote everything. You select the, the best performing ones, right? And that actually comes into play with what Rina's talking about with A-B testing. I could have one video and the message was, come with me to a cocktail party. And the next, and the next, and the, that's the A. And the B was what I wore to a cocktail party, right? So it's a different message, but same video. And what we want to see is which message connected with the customer. And I could use the same subject, but a different image. So that we'd say what my image captured the audience best. And so that's the one I'm going to promote, right? So can be focused, be consistent, and don't give up. You have one person come to your IG live and do it like you have a thousand people in there. Do it with all the zeal. Right, sorry, I think I just clicked on something. Uh... <laughs> Had you yeah, no, we, <laughs> yes, I had. Thank you. I had. Right. Thank so, you. Yeah, I think the most important part here also was the be focused and be consistent. That's really yes. important. And, um, you know, there's a uh, this, I know there's a few questions that are in the chat. We will actually go through some of those after this. We're about yeah. the end of it as well. Um, so, what next for you? Right. So importantly, we need to know what we're doing this for. Remember, it's the generation of leads. It's the following up of leads because all of this content creates some kind of engagement, some kind of lead generation and so on. So once we have generated the lead and lead is, um, you know, pretty much your target audience that potential target audience it could be and could not be so remember we've got primary audience and secondary audience as well and so they come through and you figure out whether they are um you know a value a valued lead for you or not and it, sometimes it isn't and that's okay as well right but the follow-up of this is really important all this content that we're creating has an end goal to it right the end goal is people coming to you people asking you hey listen can you help us out with this we would like you to help us out with that and then you go follow it up all the way until um you know they generate that revenue for you but remember it's value that they're getting from you it's not yeah. just about the money it really is about what benefits and what value you're creating for them if they see the value from you they will be able to like purchase from you or convert in what, whatever way that is um, on your end. 
right? And if it's not a lead that is ready right now, it's in a hot lead right now, then keep them engaged, you know, put them into a drip marketing. Drip marketing literally means that you keep them engaged in one way or the other. And email marketing could be a great way of doing that. Or they, they follow you on your social media pages and then you keep putting information out there. Remember, educative information, entertaining information, um, enlightening, empowering information and so on, right? Yeah. Um, so then you can be able to do that as well, right? So that's what yeah. pretty much your content needs to be all about, right? Yeah. With an yeah. end goal. So what yeah. next? Okay, so we have a Q&A right now. And one of the questions that really um, kind of highlights for me, we've got videos like these, like the one for today on our YouTube channels. Please find mm -hmm. us on those YouTube channels. Um, and you'll be able to like go through any of our older webinars as well. We've got different topics around it as well, right? Yeah. So yeah. one of the questions in here, um, Cindy, loving, loving, loving your questions. So please keep them coming and everybody else as well, kindly, you know, um, you know, feel, feel free to ask us questions. So here it says, what is the ratio in terms of what content to put in? For example, she says Monday promotional, Tuesday community, Wednesday entertaining and so on. I will go back into understanding what is your message, your, what's your primary message that you want to bring out over here, right? It could be the way you are saying right now, which is like, hey, listen, I want to do, you know, like um, um, items three times in a, in a week. Three times in a week is a good way of actually putting some content. But like, for example, it depends on what channel you're putting it on as well. On Twitter, you might want to put more more in a day, forget in a mm -hmm. week, right? Mm -hmm. You want to probably put more content um, daily. On, on that one day, you want to have at least three or four different kinds of things putting out there or engaging with people, for example, right? Um, if I was running a, prom a, a particular campaign, then my Monday, Tuesday, or Monday all the way to Monday again would actually be all about my primary and secondary messages right? Anything to do with that particular campaign. It could be related to um, put user generated information in there as mm -hmm. well. Um, and what I mean by that is, for example, if you're community based or if you're connecting with the community and they said something, screenshot it and put it there because that's yeah. part of your campaign connection, you know, yeah. um, and campaign could be particularly on anything. I'm, I'm just going to give an example, um, malaria, you know, let's uh, stop the spread of malaria. And that's my primary um, goal. And that's my primary message. Then my secondary yeah. messages are all about what are people doing to actually stop this malaria? What can you do to stop malaria? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is the community? And then everyone coming up with some ideas. So maybe it's like, oh, you know, listen, I put um, eucalyptus oil all around my shamba. So then that way it stops breeding, um, mm -hmm. you know, mosquitoes that are uh, bringing malaria to us. Then that's the kind of information you may want to actually ask that, hey, can I share this information? If yeah. you can tag with you, then you share it, you know, so my entire, like, like, for example, my campaign wants to run for like two, three weeks, then my entire two, three weeks are going to be around about that. So then I will not do, oh, this is promotional, or this is community, or so on, you know, so it really, really depends on like, what kind of content you want to put out there. And what is yeah. your um, messages? Remember, go back to like the messages that we were talking about, okay, yeah. your primary message, secondary message, and so on. Okay, let's see. Uh, what about paid ads? Does uh, okay, let's let me see the question that you had about paid ads. Um, that you probably skip a Google ad. Okay, so I mean, Eunice, you want to take this, or do you, would you like me to take that? Let me take that, then, and let me understand the question. So, what what is the is it a choice of paid ads, or is it to do paid ads? Are Google ads effective? I can't wait to skip ad. Makes me wonder why I would pay for a product I don't even use or like. So, some sounds like somebody's not targeting right, right? So that's that's what we mean about getting the wrong content in front of a customer and jumping yeah. on a trending topic, and this is not right for you. So if I'm a plus size woman and I'm posting stuff about plus size women and I jump on a trending topic in politics, what's that going to do? It's going to cause people to block my ad 
And what Twitter then says, or Facebook then says, wow, people are blocking the ad. They must not like the ad. Well, it's because it's with the wrong audience. So don't jump into it. So ads are effective. Ads are effective in connecting you to the audience that you need to connect to because you can't physically go connect with them, right? So for example, if I'm a plus size woman and want to make sure I've got a global audience and I need my ad to be seen all over the world, I need to put that ad out and allow Google and say, hey, Google, I want this visible to everybody in the world. Or I can niche it right back and say, I just need women in Nairobi in the 30 mile radius of Nairobi to see this. That's targeted so that only plus size women, people who identify as plus size women will see the ad. So ads are effective. And the one thing people fail in doing in the ads is targeting right, right budget, right uh, imagery and all that good stuff. So it, it takes a whole, you know, it, you have to put it in together pro- appropriately so that you, you're getting what you need to get right, right? You've chosen the right keywords for that matter. So ads are effective. It's just that we're choosing the right, the wrong audiences sometimes to push our ads to and get no, no ROI at all. And I'm going to give you a very simple example as well, right? I mean, it's um, um, I am, uh, you know, I'm into like rock music, or I'm into like okay, so I, you know, like you want to have an image that is for a young person in front of a per if if that's the audience right so if yeah. you're targeting an audience that is like young 21 and younger for example mm-hmm. sometimes um you know you have to be very specific about what their interests are remember going back to who's your target audience understanding about persona but if you put an image of an older person over there know that that may not be the right target audience for you right unless they're yeah. your secondary audience you're talking about yeah. hey have you tell your parents about blah 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 and then you have that kind of an imagery in there that makes a lot of sense right but if you're understanding your target audience make sure that yeah. even your imaging and the wordings and the way your tone is um is exactly for your audience so yes yeah. um People get it wrong in that way, and that's why you've got the wrong ads coming in front of you as well. But do do you realize do realize um, you know like uh, the right agency for you would be able to do that for you as well, right? Okay. Connect you to your right target audience. Uh, I'll give a case in point um, when you're liking things on social media, um, that information goes to the ads persons. Right. So like if you've watched a particular kind of video um, on YouTube over and over, um, like similar types of videos, I'm not saying the same video, then you'll keep getting that kind of content coming to you as well um, as a suggestion, as an ad. So the ads are also very specific to that kind of the information as well. So you'll see on YouTube, that's what happens. Um, so yes, I mean, that's, that's where targeted ads would work. Um, Eunice, there's a question in here and I, um, I love what, um, Ed and SK are doing here. What's the best way to create viral content that gets users sharing it widely? And SK is asking, is aiming to go viral really a good thing? (laughs) Um, my point in here, what is your objective? Exactly. Um, Gosh, going viral is fantastic, but you could be going viral for all the wrong reasons, right? Yeah. But and and your goal was probably to connect uh, or convert or sell. But you start out, and and I, I I'm seeing all sorts of content out there on formulas of going viral and all that good stuff. But remember, it has to come from a place where it's first of all, it's so unique, nobody's seen it before. This is the first time, so people are like, "Oh my God, have you seen this?" Right? Have you seen this? And then mm-hmm. it has to be so the quality has to be almost well. Not, not, not let me. The quality here is very subjective because quality for somebody might not be quality for another person. Because you could be in your backyard doing a stunt and you fall terrible, you fall and you might probably hurt yourself, but and still get that going viral. You probably want achieving, you want aiming to go viral with it, but it went viral because it was silly, it was funny, it was ex- exciting, engaging, and all that good stuff. 
and you actually made it easy for other people to emulate it, attempt it, and that causes it to go viral because people are trying to do the same thing you try to do and replicate your results. So the formula of going viral can't be applied to brands and uh, influencers that easily. Um, it, so it's the viral, it's viralness the of content. Enough. Yes. <laughs> and yes. And, and it's also subjective to the platform. So some, some platforms allow things to go viral and others don't. Um, and in, in, in the ways that you'd want them to. So if I posted some stunt that I did, I was, hey, um, I don't know, twerking in, in, in the White House. That might go viral because what is a black woman doing twerking in the White House? And but that would be the shared. What is the goal of that? You know, exactly. So what then the, what? Well, that was just and then everyone yes. wants to know, know about it but it, then what exactly now try and do the same for a brand how do you create viral content for a brand how would coca-cola create a viral post for people it takes some thoughts and it's a bit of science and a bit of art and it, it sometimes it's happen chance a lot it's of testing that, it, yes yes Thing, you know? yeah. yeah, so so I, I advise go search and there's tons of people talking about formulas of going viral, but examining the goal at which you were to trying to achieve. I, for influencer, I would like to go viral so I can get more following, but doesn't mean that those followers will convert to what I want them to do. They might sell or you know buy stuff or whatever, or even my that my the brands that are, uh, are sponsoring me or supporting me actually like them so examine the goal yes okay so i know we're a little bit over time um yes. just a quick one on this we do have a special offer for you today valid yeah. until yeah. if you'd yeah. like us to if you'd like to consult with us on your content strategy we have a 30 minutes free consultation either by yeah. Eunice or myself yeah. um please you know i think there's some links that have been put on the chat um do feel free to um uh, connect with us and we'll be able to like uh, do that 30 minute consultation yeah. and see where we can be able to help you out it's probably just a discovery of sorts or something but you know definitely what we would love to help you out on that so let's see how many people actually come back with us or if you know somebody who would be who, who would um like this kind of an offer please feel free to screenshot this and send it to them and uh give them our email addresses or websites and so on you know, we'd love to hear from you. Okay. Yep. Um, our next one is going to be on the next, the 19th of May. And we're talking about aligning sales and marketing. The big, big questions about, oh, sales, you no, know, who's more important marketing? Oh, sales brings in the money and so on. You know, so how do we actually optimize the productivity between sales and marketing? How do we work together? How do we yeah. grow the business together <clears throat> as sales and as marketing? So that's what we're actually tackling for the next one. So please feel free yeah. to register for that. And we shall see you again at that particular time. But yeah. before we go, as usual, we'd love to hear from you. How did you like our webinars? How do you like uh, connecting with us? Um, you can. Uh, this is a QR code. You can scan it with your phone. Um, or they're on again on the chat, you probably yeah. find um, the feedback links as well. Please mm -hmm. spare a minute. We would love to hear about what you think about our webinars and yeah. our content. And, uh, you know, if there's any other content you'd like to hear from us as well, please do write on that um, feedback uh, page as well and say that, hey, listen, I'd love to hear about this rather than this, you know. Yeah. But yes, spare a minute kindly and uh, give us that feedback. Otherwise, we're really, really grateful for all of you to have spared your an hour and 10 minutes with us today um, so that we can be able to take you through this uh, content strategy, um, educative content piece between Eunice and myself. Yeah. Um, and we're, again, very, very grateful for all of you to be here. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you that. so much for coming. Yes, thank you so, so much. And keep those questions coming. I mean, if we didn't hear the answer you're looking to have, 
um, the, I think our emails are on there, send us emails asking. And if there are other questions in regards to content and all marketing that you have, just feel free to send an email, we'll give you an answer. It, yeah, we're very receptive to those questions and we respond. I may be late at replying, but I shall reply. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah. yes, definitely reach out to us. Really, really appreciate um, hearing yes. from you. We always love to hear whether you like this or not. It could be that you don't like it, but please let us know. <laughs> That's what we're trying to say. Okay, please, please definitely let us know. Yeah. Um, let me see if there's any other question. Um, I have. Uh, Peter, you are late. Don't worry, you're here. So that's a good thing. Uh, a recording of this will be sent to you. A recording link will be sent to you next week. Yep. And you'll be able to catch up with everything as well. So definitely yep. feel free to um, reach out, watch the video, share it with other people, like it, subscribe to our channels, you know, yep. all of that good stuff. <laughs> if you like us, please do. Um, yeah. Great. Thank you guys. Thank you all so much. We're trying to keep it brief because I know everyone has some things to do as well. So yeah. Thanks again. And seeing you in the next webinar will be lovely. Yep. Asante Sana. All right. Thank you guys. Have a good evening. See you in the Thank next you. webinar. Good afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Thank you.